Hey everybody, my name is Lexi Hammonds and I play Kara in Drive All Night and you're listening to the Film Craziest Show. Awesome, and I am Daniel, the host of the Film Craziest Show. It's great to have you here, Lexi. Yeah, really good to be here, pleasure. Is Cinequest your first stop on the festival circuit? It is, yeah. It's it's our uh, first and our world premiere, so it's really exciting. It's um, It's going live on March 20th, which I believe is this coming Saturday. Yes. Okay. Yep. Nice. What's that experience like? Are you excited for it to premiere? Oh my God, absolutely. Yeah. My entire family have bought tickets. We're going to do like a little cute screening party. And I believe I have like a red carpet um, interview just kind of before we screen it to the public. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that and get to just kind of introduce myself and before people get to watch the movie, it's going to be great. Okay. So it's just like an online red carpet. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's like what they did with the Golden Globes in a way, you know, how all the actors kind of had like a setup and their camera and they like dressed up. It's going to be a very similar situation, I think. So, I mean, you know, it's a once in a lifetime experience, I guess. We'll never probably go back to doing this because why would we once things kind of get moving to being in person? You know, people obviously prefer that, but I'm, I'm excited to, to give it a shot and, you know, see what happens. Now get into the movie. I, uh, what was it like uh, creating your your chemistry with Utaka? Um, wow, you know, Utaka, he he's honestly like really easy to be around. Like he's someone that as soon as we met, we naturally just like got into like fits of laughter. We were like, you know, having conversations, just getting to know each other and building on the chemistry. I think there was a natural like friendship there and like uh i think it it just somewhat made it easier for us to feel comfortable around each other and and that i think showed on screen i i don't think we had to try too hard to kind of fake it or anything we just we connected as people and i think when you feel comfortable around someone it, it makes the world of difference when you're watching two people be romantic on screen um but you know aside from that it's it's a we had a lot of discussions about um, you know, both of our characters, what our dynamics are, like what in real life would lead for us to be so quick to make a decision that's so intense, I guess is the word, um, you know, because clearly we're both missing something in our current lives, in the character's life, but we feel like an emptiness. So there's clearly some kind of um, common interests that we both have that is met when we come together as the characters. And so I think once we fleshed that out and we kind of understood what it is that would make us kind of like mesh together so quickly and as well as like our good chemistry, just like off screen as friends and, and coworkers, it, it just happened pretty naturally for us. For preparing for it, did you guys like kind of like build, build it in a way, like just driving around or... <laughs> What do you mean driving around? So I'm making a just a bad joke, just like because you guys are always in the car. Got it. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> so uh, we actually didn't do a lot of driving um, because we were the the car itself was on a set. So okay. it was actually yeah, it was actually in a studio, and there was like a there was like a projector and and like a green screen and everything behind us. So. It's a lot of like, you know, it's not real driving, but um, yeah, I don't know if Peter will want me to say that, but whatever. Um, but, you know, uh, we, we, we naturally spent a lot of time together. I mean, we had rehearsals, um, we had meetings, just me, Utaka and the director just kind of fleshing out how he sees it and what he was and just kind of working together on that. And then, you know, we're with each other all day, every day. We like shooting. So, you know, it was just a natural progression that led to, you know, our on-screen chemistry and everything. Okay, awesome. And it, it, it definitely looks like you were in a car. So that, that's that's good green screen. We were, we were in a car. No, yeah, no, we true. were in an actual car, right. But yeah, it, I think it came out amazing. Like it just like the way they lit it and the way that they match like, street lights, everything like that. It just, it came out beautifully. People would never know the difference. 
the scenes where you're like there's like blue and red lighting in those hallways like did that look cool on set when you guys are filming those days yeah it was it was extremely red like um it, it's not just like editing in you know afterwards and stuff it was like crazy crazy red filtered lighting and um yeah it just I, I personally love a good like colored filtered lighting. I think everybody looks more flattering on it because <laughs> it just kind of like blends everything out, which is always nice when you're a girl and stuff. <laughs> okay. I, I was curious just to ask, ask a bit about the char your character design with the, the NASA jacket. Where, where, where oh, did yeah. you guys find that? Uh, it was bespoke. It was made for the character. So um, Peter had this kind of vision that this girl had this like cool red leather jacket and she was kind of into like you know NASA and video games and space all of that type of stuff and so he just kind of had all these like different buttons kind of sewn onto a jacket and um yeah it was actually I really wanted to keep it um you know as like one of those keepsakes from set but he wouldn't let me <laughs> okay so Peter has it I think he's hoping to sell it for millions of dollars <laughs> one day, <laughs> or maybe to um, or maybe to Hard Rock Cafe. You know, when they have them all in the in the restaurants and stuff. I don't know if we have any Hard Rock Cafes in Canada. I, I think I know what you mean. You don't have a Hard Rock Cafe. We might, but I've never been there. Damn, <laughs> it's it's where they have all of the um, what do you what do you call it? There's a word for it. Me mem memorabilia yeah that's it memorabilia is that the word yeah it is right memorabilia from sets and they have like they have like um the matrix or like terminator and they have all these like little pieces that people can like look at while they're dining and i i feel like peter's got like um a goal to get it in there or something like that i don't know oh. he wouldn't let me have the jacket anyway and i was upset about it because it was so cool <laughs> okay yeah i would have wanted the jacket as well that's awesome <laughs> Right. Uh, with, your, with your character's obsession with video games, um, do you have a favorite arcade game? So this is where me and the character just kind of are not on the same wavelength. Uh, I have never really been um, a video game bod or prodigy or even slightly interested. I did have a phase when I was about, I want to say 15, and I was obsessed with, you know, The Sims? But it was a it was a side it was like almost like a a sub brand of The Sims. It was called Herbs. Okay. Did you ever play Herbs? It was like U R B Z. I can. And it was like a cool. It was like the urban kind of Sims, and it was way cooler. And that I was obsessed with for like a good maybe two years, and I I loved that game. I would actually still play it to this day if if I could. Uh, if, if I if I had a PlayStation or whatever it is I need now. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, that's as far as it goes. Arcade games, I'm a bit like, I'm thinking arcade. Oh, I'm pretty good at um, that like dance machine, you know, when you like stand on it and um, you dance. Dance Dance Revolution. That's not yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not sure what the actual name is, but I used to have a dance mat as a kid too, and I would do that. And I would love doing that in arcade, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm not somebody who's good at doing the whole Mortal Kombat or whatever it is that I was supposed to be good at in the movie. Okay. <laughs> I had a, I had a question like, who, who do you frequent as is in Mortal Kombat? But I don't, I don't think I could name a character either. No, nope, the prettiest one. I would, I would always default to whoever the prettiest girl is. I'm just like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Awesome. No. <laughs> So like in your, did you have to do research about, cause, cause your character is kind of a video game encyclopedia. Right. Yep. Well, um, I obviously, uh, Peter is the mastermind and kind of, um, real prodigy behind obviously all of these, um, different types of arcade games and everything. And, um, there was like a few that I needed to know about. It was, um, obviously Pac-Man and uh, Mortal Kombat. And then there was another one too, which I'm, I'm forgetting the name of, but those he gave me, I remember like a quick 
20 minute kind of educational lesson on the differences between them. And, and I kind of like looked in my own time, you know, what that entails and how it kind of parallels to the movie, because I know that Mortal Kombat, you know, it's with the, um, the sword and the samurai and everything that I use and the way that the film is structured, it kind of mirrors video games. So yeah, to some extent, you know, I had to, I had to kind of do my my part and look at you know what the difference is between the main ones discussed in the movie and kind of how they play into that yeah for your character because you had to research those ones specifically but like did it like open up like an obsession with just looking up other ones too and just reading all night about it kind of thing or no I would love to say that it did but alas no <laughs> I I'm not I'm not really much of like I said I'm not really into it in general it was more just kind of like um, you know, at least I can have an understanding about what it is I would be into. And like I said, like I, I gave it a shot. Like I remember downloading Mortal Kombat um, on my app, on an app on my phone and just giving it a quick game and just kind of seeing what it would take for me to win, which uh, miserably I, I would never <laughs> win. Um, so, you know, I, I did, a, you know, my research and I understood what I would be you know, required to do if I was actually care as a person. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't kind of spend hours and hours playing uh, arcade games. <laughs> Although I do remember when I was, it was, it was on set and we were shooting all of the arcade scenes. I remember playing on a bunch with people that night, just while we were kind of waiting, because they were all kind of set up ready. So we just, we had a stab at it then and stuff. It was fun. You know, it's fun. Okay. That's good bonding. I like that. Oh, yeah. We, I mean, the crew and everything um, and the cast, we, it was such a, like, pleasure working with everybody. They were so, so fun and so easy to be around. And we walked, like, through the night sometimes. Like, people were just, like, really on it. And, like, people were up for a laugh, you know. It was, like, it was a professional working experience. But people just, like, you know, we're, we're all humans and we all want to laugh. We all want to have fun whilst doing it. And that's, you know, we got the opportunity to do that. Cool. Um, what was it like working with Sarah Dumont? Yeah, she's a blast. Um, she's, she's a lot of fun. Um, she's, she's an incredible actress. Um, it was so easy to click with her on set. She's like such a professional, um, you know, ready to go. Um, team player and she honestly like she's just such a funny girl as well like she's like a naturally funny girl um which you know we we had a really really great time working together I did only get to work with her I think I think it was just for one day if I'm not mistaken it may have been two but I think it was just one but I was sad because I wish she could have you know been there for the whole time because she was she was a lot of fun she's a lot of laughs she has an important role but like not there for very long she's i think yeah she's she's a pretty pivotal role in the film like she's um a big part of like yutaka's world um dave's world in the film um i only come in contact with her i think once in the whole movie whereas he comes into contact with her for like well several scenes so i think she probably worked a couple days but i only worked with her once Okay. But it would have been great if we could have had, you know what I mean? If we could have had more opportunity to work together. But of what I did, yeah, she was she was great. Okay. Now, um, what attracted you to to this script? Oh yeah, um, yeah. I remember reading the script and thinking it was so well written. First, it's always so nice when I get to read a script that has grit and is complex and you know has mystery and you have to try and figure out where is this going uh because you know if I'm if I if I can call it in the first like 20 pages I'm like mm -hmm. um okay. but it was so beautifully written as well he's so poetic like the way he writes and everything and and honestly I had never been offered to do a movie like this I always get pretty um light-hearted uh quite um comedic roles uh a little less serious not not too intense so it was just really appealing to me to get to dive into something that 
yeah, it was just going to put me out of my comfort zone a little bit and get to try something completely different to myself. I mean, Kara is, is on an, another side of the scale to me, you know, she's just, we have a couple things in, in common, but aside from that, we're very, very different people. Okay. Well, with this being kind of like a new role for you, um, like the ex- un- unset experience, was it similar or like very different with just the difference between the genres that you usually do? Oh, um, unset, let me think. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess so, actually. You know, when something's a little bit more intense um, and requires a lot more energy and, and um, but energy in a way that's kind of, uh, what's the word? Because um, like, obviously when you're, when you're being comedic and lighthearted, you have to have energy, otherwise it doesn't land. You know what I mean? Sure. But when it's more of a like, complex situation where and it's and there's a lot going on beneath the surface there's a lot of subtext um the the set atmosphere changes slightly because you kind of need to be serious um when everything's fun and lighthearted on set people move faster you know things get done quicker because it doesn't take too much time to kind of get the take but when it's when it's about things that are just a little bit more serious yeah it, it kind of can I would have to kind of leave set and, and kind of do my own inner work before coming on, like my before moment, you know, kind of get myself in the mindset of where Kara would be. And, you know, it wouldn't be great if you're coming onto a set where everyone's laughing and, 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 you know, high-fiving each other or whatever. And um, you're like depressed, <laughs> you know what I mean? It just kind of count, is counterproductive to achieving the objective of the scene. So, I mean, in a sense, yeah, it does change the dynamic a little bit when we're, when we're shooting and we're ready to get the scene. I think everybody was super respectful and, and knew their play, like knew their, their they, they picked their timing. You know what I mean? Like they're like, yeah, this is intense. We're all just gonna kind of, you know, keep to ourselves today, get our jobs done and let the actors do what they need to do. All right, awesome. Um, you, you had mentioned this is kind of uh, poetic in a way in Peter's writing. Um, mm-hmm. Were, were there any like movies he gave you to watch as like homework? Like, I'm trying to remember. I have a feeling he had me watch a J.J. Abrams movie. Was it okay. J. I'm trying to remember which one. The thing is, is we, we started preparing for this uh, back in 2000 and like summer 2019. Okay. So yeah, it's coming up almost like two years ago. Um, so I'm like, it's, it's, um, I know that there was a director. He'd probably tell you if you're going to speak to him. True. And um, yeah, sorry, I, I, it's not coming to me right now. It might, it might jolt my memory in a minute. Like when we move on, it might come back to me. That's okay. We can come back to it. Cause like, I, I definitely got um, a drive kind of sense um, with that rising Ryan Gosling film and Oh, yeah, Drive. Yeah, he didn't. I've actually seen that movie, but that wasn't the one he had me watch. It was a different one. I just okay. can't think what it is. It was, it's not like, it's not like the most um, well known movie either. It's like, super it's like eight. popular within the like indie circuit. What's that? Oh, I just said Super 8. I'm just trying to think of a J.J. Abrams movie. Oh. Okay. It, I don't know if it's going to, I might be wrong about J.J. Abrams. I'm going to beat myself up later because it's going to come to me and I'm going to be like, damn it, that's what it was. <laughs> oh, that, it's okay. Don't worry. All right. Um, also, I just had a kind of a fun one. Um, if you were to like ever hop into a taxi, is there anyone celebrity wise that you would hope would happen to share that same taxi with you? Oh, a hundred percent Steve Carell, hands down. Yeah. Oh, I don't even have to think twice about it. I am in love with him. I hope he sees this. Steve Carell, I love you. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think he is just, um, just the most incredible actor. Like he, he is just so hilarious and so grounded and empathetic. And I'm just like, how? Like, how? Just, oh, 
And I, I just, I'm in awe of him. I just like, I watch him and I could cry. Like there are times where I just cry because he's so good. <laughs> and I just, I just think he's great. So um, I, I, I honestly think if I was to get into a taxi with him and he was there, I'd probably like have a stroke or something because I, it's like, I, I don't even know what I would do. I, I think I would freeze and just not even be able to ask him anything that I would want to ask him in that moment, just because I'd be so starstruck. Um, but damn, if I could just like pick out his brain for five minutes, like I would pay big money to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I feel like you just like look out the window the whole time, just too scared to talk, right? That'd I would be, be like, he calm. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, I love him too. That's, I love that answer. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He's a great guy. Now, do you, do, you, do you try to emulate, emulate any of him in your more comedic performances? Uh, have I done that? Yeah, I mean, I think I have. Um, I, I, I love him as Michael Scott in The Office. That's where my love kind of started for him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, I, I try to bring, if it makes sense, obviously, for the role, um, you know, I try to bring that a little bit of him in the Michael Scott role. Um, but I also just quote him on like everyday life. Like if it makes sense, I'll just throw out like a Michael Scott quote and just, you know, hope people get it, <laughs> get the reference. I mean, okay. When you, when you mentioned Steve Carell, I immediately went to Anchorman with him saying, I love, I love lamp. Oh my God. Oh my God. That movie is, that movie as a whole is hilarious too. That's such a great movie. I like, I'm a big fan of um, Will Ferrell as well. He's great. Yeah, me too. Um, extremely clever man. Okay. I think this will be my last one. Um, your, your, your character has like super crazy theories at times, like with the whole vampire thing. Um, right. Did you want to just talk, was that fun to like, have all those conspiracy theories in your character oh yeah i just keep people on their toes the entire time throughout the movie and and the characters in the movie um you know what's funny is that um when we were filming i me and yutaka actually both asked peter is it true like is what she's saying true and he didn't tell us he was like what do you think and, you know, we kind of gave our own conspiracy theories about whether, you know, um, Midnight Judy was a vampire, as well as kind of like all the other kind of nodded conspiracy theories that are going on in the movie. Um, I asked, like, you know, is that actually what is happening? And, and he, never, he never actually told me until the end of the movie. And obviously I won't reveal, but um, okay. he wanted us to kind of play it how, what our best in instinct was for the character. He was like, well, you know, after we had a long discussion about, you know, what that could mean and stuff, but it was super fun to play with. I mean, to get to toy with the characters and just like keep them guessing the entire time. And, and also just having that power where it's like, yeah, this is real, but you don't know that. Or like, you know, or this isn't real, but I've got you under my thumb or something. You know, it's a lot of fun to have that kind of power in a movie. Okay, cool. Now, for you, for you as Lexi, do you have any crazy theories you, you tell people? Crazy theories? Oh, wow. Um, let me think. There's a part of me that agrees with Elon Musk about the um, living in a simulation theory. And what's, what's that one? Um, so I don't know if you've, you've like kind of heard about it, but Elon Musk, um, He's the, I'm sure you know, the CEO of Tesla. Um, yeah. he, he thinks, he believes that we are all, well, potentially, we are all living in a simulation, which is kind of oh. like a video game. Interesting and ironic, considering the film is about video games and stuff. So he believes that we um, are all living in kind of like a, a video game where, where there is a higher power or higher energy, whatever that might be, controlling everything that you know we do and everything that comes out of it and the reason why i believe that that could possibly be true have you ever like have you ever had a like a thought where you think about somebody 
and you haven't thought about them for a while, you haven't texted them for a while, and suddenly they text you like the next day. Yeah. Right. Or like you think about, I don't know, like wanting wanting a McDonald's to snack on. And then suddenly your roommate's like, hey, I'm picking up a McDonald's. Do you want something? And like all these little things just coincidentally happen when you put out the energy or the thought to the universe is how I kind of articulate it. The thing is for me is that there has been too many times where I have thought something and that it has happened momentarily after I've thought about it. Okay. And I just think, I see it almost like on The Sims. So, you know, when you play The Sims and when they're hungry or when they're tired, like a little thought bubble comes up and it's like bed and you have to like get them to a bed, right? So they can rest or yeah. get them to food. What if like that was somehow parallel to our universe? So our thoughts are like bubbles and then the people in control just, I don't know, make it, make it happen. Okay, that's, just... that's, my, that's my crazy theory. I don't know. I just... Everything I seem to put out seems to happen. And, and it can be in both the positive and the negative. If I put out too much negative thoughts, suddenly that happens too. So I don't know. Okay. I did not realize that uh, he had an, a simulation theory. So that's- He does, yeah. Yeah, it's super, yeah, you should read about it. It's interesting, his theory on like why. It's different to mine, but it's, okay. it's parallel. It kind of mirrors each other, but it's a slightly different theory, but yeah. I like it. There's, I feel like there's merit to that. <laughs> We're all just all living in the Truman Show. I mean, show. yeah. Why not? Like, there's no reason why it couldn't be that. Fair. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we'll leave off on that one. Um, Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Thank cool. you. So, uh, Lexi Hammonds, who plays Car, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Lexi Hammonds, who plays Kara in Drive All Night. Thank you for chatting with me on the Film Crazy Show. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure.